Okay, I'm getting ready to mount the circuit board permanently. You see I've cut some of the PVC insulation off the power cord. It's, the book shows to cut two quarter inch pieces and then put the insulating board, which is just another cardboard piece, but this kit doesn't come with the extra cardboard. So you want to be darn sure you keep that circuit board up from the chassis so nothing touches. So I made these 3 8 inch long and I've got uh, the bolts are already installed. I'm also to make darn sure that these don't come loose and it tells you all this in the book but I'm going to use some of this uh, thread locker. This is removable so it doesn't really hold that great but I sure don't want those screws to come loose. It should hold good enough for amp vibration. But uh, these go right here where the screws will go. And they just give you a little thing, a little tension there to screw your screws against. And put your lock washers on the back side. It's going to be real tight up against your output transformer. So you might even have to remove that and move it out of the way a little bit. Yeah, here's a little tip. See those little PVC pieces off of the power cord, the black ones? I ended up gluing those onto the board because it's a real pain trying to get these things in there. They just fall out inside the chassis and so I just glued them on there. Good tip. Bye. Well, let's hope I didn't forget anything because in Dave's book he says mounting the circuit board is his least favorite step and I can see why now. Getting these little screws in here, that one, and then there's one underneath here. On the other side, they, I mean I used half inch screws so they barely stick out right there. You can see I put the Loctite on there. The other one is way up underneath there where the output transformer is. I don't know if you can see that. And I was too lazy to take this thing and move it over because I've already got these bolts in there. To get your fingers in there and try to hold that thing takes a while. A real pain. I, I suggest that you take this one side off and move the output transformer a little bit out of the way and make it easy to get on there. But it looks like it'll hold. It's in good shape. So that's it. Okay, I'm slowly making the connections. Seems like once you do all the prep work, which is the hardest part. Everything goes in pretty quick. Just soldered that to the board. Those are the volume and tone pots. I can't do, I can't finish these connections right here because one tip I've got for you. In the instructions when you get your kit, it'll say double and triple check everything. And I took about a day before I really started counting or looking at the different resistors, but I was missing a 5 watt resistor that goes right here actually right here one of these big 5 watt resistors and then also the 1 meg resistor that goes on the input jack so I'm waiting for them to send me that yeah, I'm pretty much a perfectionist so I put a lot of love into this thing I told one of my friends that I thought I might be able to, if he bought the kit, I would build it for free, but after realizing there's quite a bit of work to this, I don't think I'm going to do that. Anyway, I got the output transformer in, tightened these up really good. This is your main ground, so this is real important. This comes with the kit. And the book shows that you're supposed to ground this one to the brass plate. As you can see, there is no brass plate in the kit. So I decided to tie all of these ground negative leads here on these main capacitors. Come straight out. They're all tied together under the board. 
that comes straight out to this uh, grounding lug. And that was a little bit hard because when you tighten this up it wants to turn and I didn't have a whole bunch of slack here so you have to be careful. I, I had to bend this down and just barely got that hooked in there but it's a good connection. I'm getting ready to make all the other connections but you really have to tighten this bolt down because that's the main ground for everything. And that's where I am right now. I've got the sockets in. I, will, I went with screws at first, sheet metal screws, and then realized that I had to put these um, grounding lugs in on these two. So I just ended up with the small short bolts, which really are pretty nice. They don't stick up too high and they're not sharp, so they won't cut wires if they get if they rub on anything. It's looking pretty good. Fender amp with new new production parts. Bye. Okay, I'm getting there. Things are looking pretty good. I tell you what, this connection here on this light lamp is pretty tight. You gotta be careful you don't have anything making contact. It was hard to see in there. Got my heater wires going from here to here. I learned, had a couple of screw ups. Uh, these heater wires, well, this is all I had left, but it barely made it to the number one and number four or five pin. And but my major screw up, and I guess it pays to have a little bit of extra wire, is this wire coming up underneath the circuit board, which there's no way I'm going to take all this apart to lengthen that. I had to put the 5 volt supply through here as long as I could and hook these two wires together, and hopefully that holds up. That was as good as I could get there. So that's where I am now. So actually looking pretty neat. Okay, I got the power cord in. I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned at Gerald Weber's Amp Camp. To help you get that in because they are tight and they need to be tight because they are a strain relief. Keeps you from pulling all these wires out by accident. But uh, white wire goes to the left side of the power switch. Black wire, one of the black wires goes from the output transformer. And then the other black wire goes to the bottom of the uh, fuse holder. And then the black wire coming from the cord goes to the side of the fuse holder. And that's it. But here I'll show you a quick little trick that, that old Johnny showed me at the camp. Which is a great trick. These things are notoriously hard to get in, so... He gave me, actually this is one that he gave me for one of the cords I bought from them. Let's see. You just take the cord, stick it on there. You can see it's it's pretty big already. Take your vice grips, clamp it on there real tight, and leave it. I'm not going to grip it because I don't want to. And leave it for about five minutes, and then just well. Actually, this one's backwards, but be sure you get it the right direction. And then, as soon as you're ready to put it in, just you know, you'll be right here, close to the. To the excuse me. Be right here, close to the hole, and just pop it right in. But like I said, leave these vice grips on there clamped for at least five minutes. It takes a while to form it. Okay, here's the deal. See my little homemade, this is a homemade voltage regulator here. 
Get you an old ceramic socket at Home Depot, wired in line there like that, with just a regular old extension cord. And if something is shorted out in this amp, this light bulb will glow very bright. And if it does glow bright and doesn't dim down, then I need to turn this thing off real quick. I'm going to turn this light off so you can see a little better. Uh, but as soon as I turn that switch on, that light hopefully will go on bright for a few seconds and then slowly dim. And it's not letting the full current go through the amp. But uh, got it on 8 ohms, got one speaker plugged in, the speaker's wired up. Let's double check, make sure it's still connected because I didn't solder it that good. Got the one amp fuse in there. And here we go. And it stayed on. And the light bulb really didn't glow much at all. That's just as good too. This is looking very good. Tubes are on. Oh man, you guys witnessed it. My first amp. Nothing's smoking yet. That I can tell. Okay, let's see. I, you never want to put two hands in these things. I mean, there is a lot of high voltage in here, but I'm trying to see one thing that these heater wires. Let's see if I can turn this a little bit. If you touch anything, always just use one hand. Keep your other hand in the pocket. That's a safety, safety precautionary measure. Here's the amp, completely done, hooked up. It's on. You can see everything's running great. Uh, yesterday, it was uh, I had a ground issue. You can hear it's very quiet now. That's all the way up. I'll explain that. Uh, it doesn't say anything in the book about this particular wire. I should have known because I mean it's, I know how the jacks work. When you unplug your guitar, that there's a contact in there that grounds out the jack so you don't get hum. And that wire right there is on the schematic, but it doesn't say anything in the book about putting that wire there. So. I put that wire, you can see it's just that added yellow wire right here. Well, guess what? After nine weeks, almost, I finally got my cabinet, Ted Weber cabinet. And uh, Ted sent me a personal message apologizing for the delay. It said they were currently looking for new manufacturers of the cabs but uh, I'll tell you what that's a classic fender I mean it is uh, really nice it was worth the wait getting ready to put the speakers in it's a wheat grill I like the combination I got tweed with a wheat grill which is somewhat unusual okay here it is. I finally get to clean up, clean up the kitchen table. It's a great pine cabinet made just like the old Fender ones. Uh, got the speakers in. Well, there it is mounted. Let me take it a few seconds. You can see that. Very cool. Very fendery. Put this on. Just like, just like one of my old tweeds. I'm real happy with this thing. I mean, it's just like a hand wired little tweed champ with uh, steroids on steroids. I'll play it here in a little bit. 